is going on. No horsing around. Family, Zach Boyd, back at it again. And you already know what it is, guys. James Boyd, one of our favorites from The Athletic. James had a big chance to take a big deep breath on the bye week, and now it's back to talking Colts football. How you been, man? I've been good. The bye week was good. Got to see my family and uh, some faces I hadn't seen in a while. But obviously, I'm excited to get back in the saddle just because the job is football, and football is pretty fun most of the time. Yeah, for sure, man. I mean, we'll just we'll just dive right in like we always do. Minnesota Vikings on the road, a Saturday, I guess a noon kickoff. Just overall feelings, thoughts, um, just as you get back into the building. I know you've had a chance to talk to Jeff Saturday. You've had a chance to just talk to some of the players. What? Just give me a, a, a good pulse of, of how it is on West 56 right now. Yeah, so I think that everyone – in that building knows this season is pretty much over. I get it that the, the Colts technically still have a chance to make the playoffs, but realistically that last week's loss was like the dagger and just the, the fashion that it happened in. Yeah. Um, rather not last week, but the last game where they lost, it was kind of just like, you know, the wheels have fallen off this season has going, you know, down the drain. Now it's all about draft position and things like that. However, for guys in the building, I've been going around and asking them, like, you know, what are you playing for? We have to prove JT saying, you know, it, it's for your legacy. And I think one of the most interesting guys in the locker room period is Stefan Gilmore. And so he, you know, I asked him the same question. He's like, well, different guys got to find out, you know, what motivates them, what drives them. I said, what motivates you? Like, you've been at this thing for, you know, 11, 12 years now. You've done, you know, incredible things. Like, what's left for you to prove? And he's like, I want to be one of the greatest ever. And yeah. so I think that that's still like an internal desire for all these guys, whether it's a contract, whether it's Gilmore possibly wanting to make the Hall of Fame. There's still reason to play this game. Jeff Saturday trying to, you know, make his case to be, you know, brought back for next season, or at least be a candidate for the job. So all these things uh, kind of factor in, but it just feels like, you know, while all that's happening internally, externally, you know, in the real world, I guess, not the real world, but just in the outside world, you're looking at draft positioning and the culture number seven right now. And obviously, some losses would really help them, you know, if, if they're going to draft that, you know, next quarterback to kind of lead this franchise. No doubt about it. I mean, when you when you talk about it, two weeks, you go from being 14th in draft position and you slice it right down the middle, you get to being in seven mm -hmm. um, and might even have an opportunity to move up even more this week yeah. if some things shake out the way that they are, you know, looking like they might shake out. When it comes to Jeff Saturday, I know one of the hot topics was, hey, he's saying all the right things, doing all the right things. He wants to interview for the job next year. Just in your opinion, just your gut, you know, no, no, you know, educated speculations, what we would call it. You think he's a viable candidate next year? You think Jim Ursay is just kind of, a, I've always felt like Ursay is attracted to that big fish. You know, he's never really got it necessarily. You know, Tony Dungy was a big fish, but outside of that, he's never really got that big fish. How do you feel about that? I think that Jeff will get a look, but I would say that they don't bring him back next season. He's just not prepared for it. He's not ready for it. I would, again, like I told you, I believe the last time I was on, I don't think that there's not a role for him in the Colts building. Like he could probably be a heck of an offensive line coach. I just think that, after that Raiders game, which, again, the Raiders are a terrible team. If you don't realize that by now, I mean, the, the Rams game was even more evident of that. Like, how do you lose to a team at a quarterback for, like, you know, 48, 72 hours? However, I do think that when we saw, like, the, the timeout issue, you know, I believe against the Steelers, um, and then, you know, you had the some of the things that happened in the, in the Dallas Cowboys game, um, some of his challenge a couple plays. Exactly. And, like and some of the questions that we've asked and the responses, like, you know, Kevin Vaughn from the fan, he, you know, he asked, Hey, uh, you know, have you talked to Matt Ryan about his shoulder and is it bothering him? And he's like, no, I don't ask questions about injuries. And it's like, I get it. You're not a doctor, but you know, any coach at any level of football is going to ask their best player, or at least their most important player, how they're feeling. Yeah. And then he came out this week and said, yeah, you know, I actually went back and asked after you all asked me about it. And it's like, that's not how it's supposed to work. So it's things like that where you're like, maybe he's just got too much going on. Um, I think he's passionate about it. I know he cares about it. Yeah. But, you know, overall, I just don't think that you can bring him back and bring in potentially a new quarterback and have them both learn together and it be successful. I believe you have to have some experience in that, um, you know, in that coaching role just to help your young quarterback along because I believe that they will draft a quarterback to the coming draft. 
Um, so we'll see. And I even you know, on a tangent, I was mildly surprised that they stayed with Matt Ryan just because of how badly he looked against Dallas. Yeah. He leads the league in interceptions, leads the league in, turn, in, in fumbles. Um, if he was his own team, he would be sixth, you know, in the league for turnovers for entire teams. He's got yeah. 18 of them. So yeah. I don't think that there's really a case for him to start over, say, a Nick Foles. But at this point, they're going to stick with him. And I just think that uh, it really can't get any worse for the Colts. And honestly, if it does get worse, like we talked about, um, you, the benefit is that you're probably moving up into the, the range you want to be if you're going to draft a quarterback. Yeah, no doubt about it. You think a little bit of that has to do with James kind of piggyback on what you said. You know, Saturday was a player, you know, and he knows what it's like to kind of play in that twilight year. I always call it the twilight year because it's that realization while you're in the middle of something that, oh, my gosh, this game's kind of got away from me. It's got too fast for me. I'm not able to perform like I have in the past. Do you think that he's very sensitive to that situation? And maybe that's what's leading him to come up with this conclusion. Hey, let's just – we're not gonna. We're not that good of a team, anyways. Let's just let Matt go out gracefully um, and let him have his last four games, and and, and and we'll see how how it all shakes out in the off season. I think part of that is a factor. I think he feels for Matt Ryan, but at the same time, I feel for Nick Foles. I believe that Nick Foles has probably been tossed around the most when it comes to like his role with his team. He was brought in to be the backup, hasn't been given a little a legitimate chance to like fulfill his role or to have a role. I mean, he was demoted to third string without like throwing a pass. Like, so and it's kind of ridiculous to think that you have a Super Bowl MVP on your roster who's getting paid a good amount of money um, to, you know, to be the backup, one of the higher paid backups in the league, and he's not getting a chance to play. So I think that Jeff Saturday is, uh, you know, rolling with this guy, which is fine. I just don't think – this is how I looked at it, man. After the Dallas game, talking to some of these players on this team, I don't see how you can justify – playing Matt Ryan. And I asked Jeff Saturday this. I said, what has he done to keep his job? I understand yeah. that you all are comfortable with him in that spot. You say he's like, you know, if he has been his A game, give you the best chance to win. But, like, what has he done to keep his job? And right. leading the league in turnovers, having a four-turnover performance against the Dallas Cowboys, granted it's a great defense, to me that's not enough to justify not at least giving Nick Foles a look. And the only reason I mean pushing Nick Foles is because Jeff Saturday was the one who pushed him to QB2. Yeah. For the Cowboys game, saying it was his experience that put him over Sam Ellinger. And then now he's saying he's going to remain over Sam Ellinger because of the experience. So I'm like, if that's the reason, I believe that you should at least give him a chance to actually play as well. Because, I mean, if anything, I don't like to bring this up, but there is an injury risk involved, as you know. Sure. You know, Matt Ryan sustains a significant injury, and he's on the, he's on the roster until early of, of next year. They're going to owe him a lot of money. And so I know they don't want to ever, like, think like that, but that is a factor. And so – um, all these things combined, man, I think that, uh, like I said, you know, like you alluded to, Saturday feels for Matt Ryan, but the game has passed him by. I, I don't I don't think that there is anything drastic he can do to change what's happened this season. He's just I, – I believe that when we're looking at him, Tom Brady, some of these other quarterbacks, we're seeing the end of an era because I don't think that we're going to see a lot of the guys who are just, just pocket passers. Like, you got to be athletes now. And even the average quarterbacks can still run a little bit and move a little bit, like the Kenny Pickett of the world. Kenny Pickett helped beat the Colts because he could move. He could run. Exactly. So um, we'll see. But I do, again, I will always say this, Matt Ryan, class act. Because I asked him flat out, I said, you lead the league in turnovers, lead the league in interceptions and fumbles. What do you have left to prove? And he's like, there's always something to prove. And I know he feels slighted and probably feels disrespected with how the season is gone. But um, shout out to him for answering every question and never making any excuses. I can respect that. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, he he's sitting there and he's fell on the sword the whole time, whether it being getting taken out for Sam Ellinger. I mean, he's been the consummate professional, uh, but at the end of the day, uh, you know, you got to win football games. <laughs> you know, when it comes right down to it, and just being a good guy and saying all the right things is not going to add up. Um, Minnesota Vikings playing completely opposite of us. You know, I mean, they're, they're, they're kind of a high-powered offense. Their defense hasn't been great this year, but as far as the Vikings, Justin Jefferson, is there even a shot, James, that, 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 we, that, that, we, stop this, that we stop this train? Dalvin Cook, Justin Jefferson, TJ Hawkinson. I mean, is there just a little bit of, of, of Ray of hope for Colts Nation who's tuning in to, to this to this podcast. Well, look, man, I, there's always a chance because the NFL is such a funny and weird league. I believe that 
when the Colts played the Eagles, people thought it was going to be a blowout. When the Colts played the Cowboys, obviously that, that fourth quarter changed everything, but it was, a, it was a close game. Like they were going tip for tap with them throughout that game. If Isaiah Rodgers gets the interception, maybe the game looks different. But I do think there's a chance. Um, I don't think there's a very good one, you know, going on the road. Yeah. But I, I will say this, and I'm fascinated by this. So Stephon Gilmore is one of the few, like, cornerbacks, number one cornerbacks who travels across the field. So I expect him to be more or less shadowing Justin Jefferson, who is, like, the newcomer, third year in the league, um, arguably the best wide receiver in the league already. Yeah. And then you got Stephon Gilmore, who's trying to prove his staying power and that he's still one of the top dogs in the league. So I kind of like the game within the game. I do like their chances of at least slowing him down. You have a guy like Stephon Gilmore who um, will win his share of one-on-one matchups. I don't think you can play one-on-one with Justin Jefferson the entire game. But I do think that um, he's going to take that personally to kind of, you know, show the young buck like, hey, you're great, but there's still another level, you know, that you have to get to or – or something that I can do to kind of manipulate the game. So I think that I'm looking forward to that matchup a lot. And on the flip side, is it, it isn't like the, the Vikings defense is like fantastic. Like they're okay. And they give a lot of completion. So if anything, with the struggling offense, with Matt Ryan kind of struggling to, to you know, get the ball down the field, with those cushions that they keep giving the wide receivers without pressing, I'm like, hey, just dink and dunk them, get in a rhythm. And you might see a guy like, you know, Pittman have a big day or Alec Pierce or someone like that. Paris Campbell, who I talked to, who's having, a, you know, his best career, best season of his career so far. So sure. um, there's always a chance. I just don't think there's a very good one. But um, if anything, again, guys are playing for contracts. You know, I talked about it actually. You know, it's, it's a scoop, but it's coming out. My story on um, free agency is coming out tomorrow. I talked to some guys on the team about that. And some of them are really candid about, you know, their future, what it looks like, what it means. And so all these guys are trying to, you know, put on the resume like, hey, this season might be bad, but I can play. And so yeah. um, we'll see. And then they didn't really give too much, uh, you know, uh, of a nod to it this week about being spoilers to other teams. But I, as, as a petty competitor, I do believe that there's something to be said about, you know, denying a team, you know, that bye week in the playoffs or, or, or messing up, you know, their, their seating in the playoffs, something like that. Like, even if you, it's like, if I can't get in, I don't want you to get in either kind of way. So yeah. um, I think that that's a bit of motivation too. And, and you never know. That's why you play the games. Yeah. I mean, you be a little bit petty and kind of stop all that. I know, I know James Boyd is team petty. all the way. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> you know, what it goes other fans don't want to hear that because they want the high pick, but it's like, I'm telling you, these guys in the locker room don't care about a pick. They care about their futures more than anything. Sure. So um, yeah. that's always the part that, that I enjoy about the game is that you still have to play it. And, and although I get all the, pros and cons of you know of losing and all that type of stuff um they, i cannot say you know with the straight face that these guys you know are, are not going to try like they, they're going to try like hell to get a win and and um you know think of guys like buck and grove like they're not gonna you know just lay down so sure. uh, i'm excited to see what they do when you know you're playing for pride and and, and like like i just said pettiness <laughs> exactly i mean when I think about the Vikings, I, I do think we compete. You know, I think it's going to be like a lot of games that we've played this year. You know, we're going to come out and play good for, you know, two, three quarters, and ultimately the better team prevails. You know, mm -hmm. that's just kind of been the, the sentiment all year long. And, I mean, when you got a guy like you mentioned earlier, Justin Jefferson, you know, solely responsible for my nine-year-old doing the gritty up and down my house <laughs> all day long. I mean, this guy is just a phenom. Yeah, he's um, fine. Just he's, he's, he's a special, special athlete. And um, I think it's just going to be too much to overcome when it comes right down to it. Last question before we hop off here, James. If you had to guess, if you're looking into the future, any coach on this coaching staff going to be a part of this football team next year? Oh, that's a tough question. I'll say yes. I believe somebody will be brought back. Perhaps even Jeff Saturday as an offensive line coach. I just think that they have to get a new head coach in here. And I don't think that, you know, a guy like Scotty Montgomery, you know, the running backs coach or Reggie Wayne, I don't know if he sticks around, but like, I think that there's going to be consideration in Bubba Ventrone, who's been awesome on special teams. Like, I don't think you want to get rid of a guy like Bubba Ventrone, who's one of the better coaches in the league, you know, unless he's moving on to something, you know, better as far as his career. But I think that it would, you know, there's going to be some change, but not a full, you know, overhaul where we're just not seeing any familiar faces. Um, you know, if that does happen, I'll be a little bit surprised. But uh, 
I'll take that back. No, I would not be surprised because this season has taught me if anything <laughs> is possible, um, anything is possible. Because man, I could have never predicted how this thing would go. So we'll see. I do think that the last you know four games will probably have a factor in that and how you finish. And um, again, Jeff Saturday said he wants to coach. He wants to get an opportunity to do it again next year. He said he has a plan for like the future and what he wants it to look like. And obviously to get to that future, you want to show that, you know, you can be competitive and, and possibly win some games. So I picked the Colts to end the season with five wins. They're obviously there at four right now. I believe their only realistic win left or is, is the Texans. And even then they hadn't beat them early in the year. So yeah. we'll see. But um, like I said, a lot of prideful guys in the locker room, a lot of guys who are um, you know, finishing up the rookie deals like Paris Campbell, you know, Bobby Okereke, uh, you know, EJ Speed, like all these people want to have futures beyond this. And sure. so, uh, you know, even Rodney McLeod, you know, who's a guy who was super underrated during free agency last year, signed with the Colts and he's balled out this year. Now he's like, I got to prove myself again and because and, and, it was a one year deal. So um, all these things matter and I'm excited for it. And you know, a trip to Minnesota to see them play against a, a dynamic team is a – it's a treat, man. It's a privilege to do, to do the job. So we'll see what happens. I know that they're going to be uh, fired up, and uh, if they do get a win, I expect it to be pretty rowdy in the locker room afterward. Yeah, absolutely, man. Before we get off here, I guess you alluded to it a little bit earlier, uh, but uh, what you're writing about, let us know what you got coming around the corner, what we can expect on The Athletic. We always love your perspectives over here. So just let the fans know what you're writing about and what you got going. Yeah, I appreciate that. So got one coming out really soon. Um, whenever they post it, I believe it'll be obviously it'll be before the game. Um, it involves, you know, some of the guys on the team and their futures and what it looks like. And it's really candid just about how, you know, you can chase something or want something and, and, and it's here, but you're trying to like balance staying in the moment but also realizing your life could change. You might not live in Indianapolis, you know, in, in a few months. And so um, the guys I talked to are really candid about it. Paris um, was really candid about it. Um, the one player I won't mention, you guys got to just check it out. I believe that you'll be a little surprised by it, but it was probably one of the most uh, transparent um, interviews I've had in a, little, in a little while just about the process of being, you know, uh, uh, uncertain about your future and living in that uncertainty, you know, year after year. So um, that's one I'm working on. The other one I'm working on, I've been putting a lot of work into it. Um, just stay tuned. Zaire Franklin, it's all say, okay. uh, you know, hell of a guy. And I, I'm really trying to make sure I do justice to, you know, that guy and, and what he's trusted me with. So um, throw the things up on my sleeve. I'm thinking of just trying to make sure that no matter what, I give you all things to read that'll stand the test of time more than the wins and the losses because there's still some really good guys and stories to be told on this team. I know people might be rolling their eyes, but that's the truth, man. And when you read the stories, you'll understand because it's bigger than football. Absolutely, man. And I'll say if one thing about this Indianapolis Colts football team, not been the season that we wanted to go – the way that we wanted the season to go, we got a lot of high-character guys in there, a lot of fascinating, yeah. fun stories. So it keeps you busy, no doubt about it. James, man, as always, appreciate you. Thank you so much for hopping on. And uh, we'll definitely see you around uh, around the corner. Make sure you got your – bundled up for Minnesota. This <laughs> yeah, man, I got done doing laundry just recently, and I'll be packing along, John. So it should be fun. Whenever you need me to come on, I'm happy to do it. And uh, we'll see what the Colts do this Saturday. Absolutely. Well, guys, that's this one right here. Um, light us up in the comments. If you haven't joined the family, like, rate, review, share, subscribe. Join this family, man. Use your voice um, as this family just gets keeps growing and getting larger even through this. Stick with us. Exciting times, possible new coaching changes, general managers, possible rookie quarterback. So many things to kind of debate um, as we go along. But thank you again so much for your support. Until next time, go Colts.